Tagging is an important part of IT resource management for many organizations, and Morpheus supports a robust set of cloud resource tagging features, which includes two-way tag sync, tag enforcement, and tag auditing tools. As mentioned, we get automatic two-way tag sync with Morpheus. That means whether I update my tags in Morpheus or whether I update them in the cloud management console, the two-way tag sync is going to ensure that tagging data remains the same in both places. To start out with, let's take a look at a library item that I've created in advance. This is a provisionable library item that my users could choose to provision at any time if they wanted to. But what I've done is I've embedded Morpheus tagging tools to ensure that it's easy for them to remain compliant. Uh, my simple tagging schema here for this example requires um, my users to indicate which department that cloud resource belongs to. So to begin with, um, I have an input. This is a custom input. Um, it's labeled department tag. And I've set a couple of things on here. I've set export as tag. And what that does is it means that when this custom option is set at provision time, whatever value um, given in the custom option is gonna be exported as a tag. So I certainly want that. Um, I've also marked show on edit. That means if I were to edit the instance after it's provisioned, I would be able to see the value for this custom option. So I wanna do that in case I wanna edit my tags after the item is provisioned. I've checked editable. Again, that's gonna make sure that any that are shown on edit are also editable and not just read only, which I do want. And I've marked display value on details, which means that if I drill into the instance detail page, I'm gonna see the value of this custom option. Um, in other words, the tag. My type is a select list um, because I wanna make it easy for my users to simply select the department at provision time. I'll show you how I set up the list um, that provides the relevant options to them. The label is just simply a label for the field at provision time so they know what they're supposed to be entering in that field. And then you can see I've tied this option type, uh, sorry, this input to an option list. Uh, which is called departments. And that's simply a static list of the departments that I want to be selectable when my user provisions this particular instance type. We can take just a quick look at that departments list that they'll have to choose from. This is just simply a, a static JSON body that is gonna populate that dropdown list for me. So if we move over to blueprints, the library item in question here I've called custom Ubuntu and if I take a look at it um, you can see that I really haven't done a whole lot in terms of uh, putting custom values on this instance type I've simply indicated that I do want my department tag input to be visible when that item is provisioned and if I drill in here and take a look at the layout that's associated with the instance type uh, we can see I haven't done a whole lot here. Um, I'm not doing any kind of complicated uh, automation workflows or anything like that. I've simply indicated that the underlying image that should go with this instance type is just a basic Ubuntu 2004 image. Um, so nothing fancy going on here in terms of automation, but just simply to show how the tagging schema can be deployed. So with that created, a user might go to provisioning instances and want to add my new input, or I'm sorry, provision my new instance type. So I search for Ubuntu and I've found the one that I've created. I do have to give it a name. Simply give it a name for demonstration purposes. Then we'll move on. Um, there are a couple of custom, or sorry, required fields here that we do have to fill in. Um, but the key takeaway here is that we do have this custom option um, given at provision time and I will select it and I will, as you can see, I will get that static list of departments that I want to be selectable. So I'll select that and because this custom option was set to export as tag, we're going to see that uh, we're going to see that uh, that is set as a tag here in just a moment after provisioning is completed. Just to take a real quick look in advanced options, I'll also point out that tags uh, can be entered manually here at any time. You've got this plus button. You can add as many of them as you want. So I've 
added this custom option simply to make it easier um, and a little bit more consistent by having my users select specific options from a drop-down list rather than just having them entering manual text here and potentially having things that are all over the place um, or not entered correctly. Uh, either way is fine. Those are going to end up as tags either way. Um, whether you have a custom option exported as a tag or whether uh, you simply have tags entered manually here, either way is going to work just fine. But I did want to point that out. Um, for consistency, you may want to do what I've done by creating the custom option and giving the users a static list of items to choose from. So at this point, the resource is provisioning. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to the point where the resource has finished provisioning so that we don't have to wait and we'll pick back up as soon as this is ready. Okay, now my instance has fully provisioned. We can see it has the Ubuntu for tagging name that I gave it in the previous step. I could have included a custom logo with my custom instance type if I wanted to to make it look a little bit nicer in these lists, but in this case I didn't do that. If we drill in, we can see uh, department is set as dev. Um, this is the uh, tagging area where you see them up here. Um, down here, custom options are displayed, and since my tag is both a custom option and a tag, uh, we can see that it's reflected in both places. If we take a look in the AWS Management Console, we can see I do have my instance here, and if we drill into that, taking a look in the tags, uh, we can see it's got its name, which I've given it. That's what Morpheus does that automatically for you, but here's the custom tag that I set. Uh, department equals dev. Now, let's take a look at the two-way tag sync. So if I edit my instance back in Morpheus, again, when I created that custom option, I indicated that I wanted the custom option to be visible when I edit an instance, which it is. We can see that here. And I also wanted it to be editable when the instance is edited, which is why I have the ability to now edit this. So. I'm going to change departments. Let's say that I accidentally indicated the wrong department at provision time. I want to update that. So I'm going to edit that there and I'm going to hit save changes. That's going to take just a moment. And you can see that those have gone ahead and updated in Morpheus. And it's going to be very quick on the AWS side as well. I'm still here on my EC2 instance detail page. If I hit the refresh button, go back to the tags area. I've already got that tag updated here. But let's take a look at the um, tag, uh, editing the tag from the other direction. So if I hit manage tags, I can change any of these tags. I'm gonna change this back to dev. Let's say, no, actually it should have been dev. I was right in the first place. So I hit save. That's gonna save as far as AWS is concerned. If we go back into Morpheus, um, there's a, approximately five minute uh, cloud sync period. So you're not gonna see that within a matter of seconds in most cases, um, but that's automatically gonna sync down within five minutes. In this case, for demonstration purposes, I can simply drill into the cloud and I can force a refresh, um, which I'm gonna do right now. And as soon as that refresh takes place, I can go back to my instances list, select the instance, and if I refresh, there we go. My tag is already updated there. And now in this case, because the custom option um, is not automatically updated in that case, my custom option is, is still showing as accounting, but the tags will always uh, sync both ways. And if you wanted, you could go ahead and update that uh, custom option from the Morpheus side as well, just for consistency's sake. So that's how the two-way tag sync works. Again, that is not just a feature in AWS, uh, between AWS and Morpheus. That also applies to all of the major public and private cloud types that can be integrated. So you know, VMware vCenter, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, um, all of those and more um, can do two-way tag syncing in Morpheus. So tagging and two-way tag sync works great, but we need to make sure that our users are always in compliance with the tagging policies. And that's where the Morpheus policy engine comes in. So I'm gonna move over to administration policies. 
and you can see that I already have a tag policy set here. This is created in advance, but let's take a look at what I did here. Um, in the prior portion of this video, that policy has been disabled, so it wasn't um, activated at all. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and enable it so that we can take a look at what this can give us. I've set strict enforcement here, and what that means is the provisioning engine won't allow any provisionings to go forward that don't meet my tagging policy. So in this case, I'm gonna keep that on, um, but we'll look at the ramifications of having that on versus off as we go along. So you do have to enter a key, um, and that means that a tag with this particular key must exist uh, when the item is provisioned. We can choose to edit a specific, uh, we can choose to enter a specific value as well if we want, or we can keep this open uh, so that, you know, a tag with this key has to exist, but we're allowing any or multiple values um, to be entered um, as the value for the tag. We can leave this open-ended, but in my case, I've said the value of the tag must be within the option list of departments, which is that same list of departments that I showed earlier. And Morpheus policies can also be scoped. We could be a little bit more specific if we wanted. I've kept this at a global scope, but we could target this policy to you know, specific infrastructure groups, specific clouds, even specific users or um, users with specific roles. There's lots of different ways that we can scope this. I've chosen to just keep it global. So it's enabled and I'm gonna save changes. Let's go back to the provisioning engine and we're gonna to try to provision the exact same thing. So if I go in here, the name doesn't really matter because I'm not gonna go all the way through with the provisioning process this time, but what I do wanna show is that if I uh, set a couple of things here that are required, <clears throat> and then I try to go through, this should normally be enough. If uh, there's no policy stopping me, this would normally be enough um, information to go forward with the provisioning. If I hit next, I'm actually going to get stopped and it's going to say, Hey, this particular custom option must have a valid property selected. I'm also getting a similar warning down here. Cause as I mentioned previously, we can statically enter any tag that we want down here and either place is going to satisfy my policy. I could choose dev here, like I did before and click next. And that is going to allow me through. If I go back, let's take this out. I can actually do the exact same thing down here. And either one of those is going to satisfy the policy. So let's go ahead and uh, close that. I want to go back to the policy engine edit this one more time and let's take off strict enforcement. Let's see what that's going to do for us. That is going to allow us to provision instances that are outside of compliance with the policy, but it's also going to surface those items to the administrators for um, potential auditing later if needed. And we'll take a look at how that works. So I'm going to go back through, I'm going to set my standard options again this time i'm not going to apply a tag so we're outside of compliance with the policy since it's not strictly enforced it is going to allow us through and i'm going to click complete at this point i'm going to pause once again and we'll pick back up as soon as this resource is provisioned so i'm all done provisioning we can see the green arrow here now uh, we didn't apply tags to this particular instance so it's outside of the tagging uh, policy, but that policy wasn't strictly enforced. So if I drill into the instance and then I take a look at the VM detail page, we get this banner anytime that there's a virtual machine that is outside of tag compliance. So it's telling me exactly which tag is missing and which policy is requiring it. So anytime we see this, um, administrators can choose to allow provisioning to go forward that's outside of their compliance, but this warning banner will be surfaced anytime that there is uh, a machine that's outside of that compliance. Additionally, we have um, a report that can help to surface um, all of these in a more aggregated way. 
It's called the tag compliance policy. There it is, tag compliance. Let's click on this and let's go ahead and run one. You can uh, leave this empty and it will show you appliance wide, all of the machines that are outside of tag compliance. Uh, but we can also target specific clouds. I'm going to go ahead and target that AWS cloud we've been working with. I'm going to hit run. That's generating. And it is now ready. So if we click on it, it's going to give us, uh, it's actually going to show us all three of these because I did have uh, two instances that were provisioned prior to the making of this video and prior to instituting that policy. So it's going to um, surface all three of those because I would initially provisioned those uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so they were outside of the new policy. So even if they predate the policy, they'll still be shown here. But the one that we just provisioned now is the Ubuntu 2. It's surfacing that for us. Tells us how many VMs in total. Tells us how many clouds. Of course, in this case, there's only one cloud because we targeted the report to one cloud. Um, but alternatively, we could have kept that more open-ended and looked at appliance-wide all of the resources that are outside of compliance. So that's how Morpheus tagging works. To summarize a little bit, we have two-way tag sync between the cloud and Morpheus. We can uh, give our users an easy way to uh, work within our tagging policies using custom options and option lists. We can also set our tagging policies. Those can be strictly enforced or they can be a soft policy that isn't strictly uh, enforced. And also Morpheus gives us tools to surface any resources that are outside of scope for our tagging policy. Thanks.